this is Zach Brooks with World Transplant Athletes. Tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime, and of course, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. As a two-time kidney transplant recipient and frequent per participant at local, state, and international events, I often wonder how do other transplant recipients take care of their bodies and prepare for competitions? Well, for me, there's only one way to find out, and that's to talk to the most inspiring people in the world. Today, I have Constance Rashea Collins from the United States, who is now living in Uganda. Constance, welcome to the show. It's really good to see you again. Thanks so much for inviting me, Zach. It's great to be here, and it's great to connect with you again after our first time meeting in Spain a few years ago. So and this is Salt great, City. thank you so much. Yeah, and in Salt Lake City, <laughs> and then also we were sitting next to each other, your family had a tent, and my family had a right. tent we were sitting next to each other. And then we met each other in Atlanta once. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's been nice around the world. <laughs> around the world, yeah, excellent. So what I'd like to do before I get to the tips is have, I want people to get to know you a little bit because maybe there's someone out there today who's just waking up with a transplant in a hospital somewhere, who's more or less like Constance. And what would we kind of share with, with that person? So let's have them get to know you a little bit. So question number one is which transplant have you had? Um, I've had a kidney transplant and I've had not just one, but I've had two of them. My first one was in um, July of 20, no, yeah, 2011. And my second one was in October of 2020. So it hasn't even been a full year with my second transplant. Well, congratulations. What were the causes of the kidney failures? Why did you have to get a kidney transplant? Uh, I was diagnosed with lupus and thank you for the congratulations. I feel great about it. Um, I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 18. And uh, it was lupus nephritis and it attacked my kidney. So I went into kidney failure the first time and the second time. Um, it, I just had a lot of like crazy things happening to my body. Um, lupus related and other complications. Yeah, go ahead. Great, great. So two time kidney transplant recipient like me. So certainly <laughs> we're in a, a very particular club. So uh, question, yes. number two, question number two for you. If you had to summarize your transplant journey, or in your case, journeys into one word or two words, what would it be? Uh, that word would be whirlwind, uh, because like it's everything when you when you experience like health health decline, it feels just like you're navigating so many things and trying to figure out what's what. And it just felt like a whirlwind. And also with my second transplant, I was only in the States for three weeks before I got the call. Um, so that was very shocking to me. You know, I wasn't even thinking that I was going to get a call. So when it happened, it was just like, oh my gosh, my life is about to change overnight, literally. Like yeah. one night I'm on dialysis and the next I have a transplant and it was just a crazy whirlwind for sure. Yeah, I think we, we talked once while you're in the hospital. I think it was maybe a day or two before you're supposed to get your transplant. And correct me if I'm wrong, I, I remember the time you were doing uh, you were almost like maybe 70% finished of a, a master's degree. So you were actually trying to do homework while you're in the hospital bed, probably doing dialysis. And then next days you were going to have your transplant. Is that right? Because I remember talking to you briefly. And I just remember you like your eyes, you're looking up kind of the sky, just trying to figure out how you're going to like organize all of these things, including a transplant in the next 48 hours. Or, I mean, what, what were those moments like? Because that's just you know, absolutely incredible what you're going through. Yeah, I mean, it was probably more like 24 hours um, because I got the call and I got the, the transplant like less than 24 hours later. And it was really crazy to to have to plan that as well. Like I was, I, I'm still in the process of getting my master's degree um, and I was doing it at home. Mm -hmm. um, on dialysis and then to just get a call for a kidney. I mean, that's another reason why I felt like a whirlwind, like, holy crap, like, how am I going to organize myself? And 
Yeah, it's just, it, I mean, I was very excited about it. I wasn't too worried. I'm not sitting there like, oh, I need to think about school. But it just was one of those things like, okay, this is happening. I really need to, you know, figure out how I'm going to, how I'm going to organize myself after this crazy transplant. And also, you don't know how you're going to feel afterwards. I mean, I didn't remember how I felt really after my first transplant. So it was a little bit scary to but it all worked out. Sure, sure. I mean, you're trying to plan things, not really sh- sure of your body state a couple of days later. Right. Yeah. Wow. Right, or if it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. That's a scary thought as well, because when you get the call, you don't know for sure if it's going to be a match even. You know, they, they told me like it's, it's, you know, very likely. I mean, it's a match, but you don't know. There can always be things that happen once you get to the hospital that make it so that you're not able to accept this kidney. So, you know, lots of nerves and thoughts running around. Yeah, very sweet. So number three, a warm-up question number three is what was your first exercise post-transplant? And, you know, you can answer two times if you like. Yeah, actually, there are two like significant exercises that I did post transplant. So one, um, like my first actual exercise, I went for a very, very short walk with my stepfather, who was my donor the for the first transplant. And we walked in the park. And <laughs> I just remember going so slowly like I it was not that far I'm sure but you know after a major surgery this this walk I was like oh my god how am I going to make it and we saw like a family of deer that was in the park and that was nice but I just remember the exhaustion just having to pause every like five minutes but it it kind of goes into one of my tips that I'm going to get about just starting, even if it's slow. And then how many days after was that particular walk? This was probably about a week, a week, maybe. Yeah, it was probably a week. The first few days. Yeah, it was very hard in in the beginning, but he pushed me. He was like, you have to get out of bed and turn off Netflix. And I was like, no, okay. (laughs) Because my doctors also, they were like, you need to, you know, you have to walk, you have to do it. Yeah, so that was my first one. And my second one was Peloton and it was great. And I wanted to shout that out because that really was a great way for me to get back in shape after after my exercise. I'm not a spokesperson for Peloton, but it was really fantastic. And I bought one like three weeks later. Nice, very nice. Well, if it works, then why not shout it out? That's awesome. So then the yeah. final, the final warm up question I have uh, for you, in which activities and sports do you regularly participate? Um, well, as of like this moment right now, I am only doing walking. Um, I'm still transition, uh, transitioning and settling into my new home in Uganda. But um, when I, af- right after my transplant, I was regularly like working out, doing functional training, strength training, um, the Peloton. I had a personal trainer when I went back to South Africa. So I had a very uh, uh, very regimented, uh, workout schedule, uh, five days a week at 5 a.m. with my personal trainer in South Africa. Um, so I, I was quite active right now. I'm just trying to find my groove. So it's mostly walking Mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to get back into my strength training and, um, my cardio fitness as well. So, yeah. yeah. So in the last year, you've been from South Africa to the United States, back to Uganda, South Africa, back to the United States, and now back in Uganda, right? So you've, you've traveled a lot in just one yeah. year. So yeah. It takes yeah. a while. Moved so, around. <laughs> nice. Okay. So now let's get to the heart of the show. And this is, I'm really excited about this. A few weeks ago, you shared with me your tips. And what I like to do is I like to walk through them one through five, we go back to the top, and then you can talk us through each of those tips. So the first tip, when I saw your tips come through, the one that excited me the most was actually number one. So the first tip you have here is start slow, but just start. Number two, listen to your body. 
Number three, find a routine that works for you and stick to it. Number four, celebrate all in big caps, the small wins. And number five, stretch well, stretch often. So let's go back to the top, start slow, but just start. Why is that tip number one for you? It's uh, tip number one for me because it's one of the hardest parts of starting any sort of like workout routine is the starting, like just like getting out there, especially that first time. And as a, as a transplant athlete or a transplanted person, um, it can be a little bit scary, you know, like knowing when's the right time to start. And as I mentioned, I, I started my first walk. I mean, it was a leisurely walk in the park mm -hmm. one week after the transplant. And it was a little scary. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but, you know, it was a start and it really, it, because I did make it, it helped me to, you know, do a little bit more every single day. And it's, it makes you stronger. Your body is so weak after transplant. You have to, you have to build it back up and, you know, you have to start slow um, for sure. You can't just get out there and like run a marathon, but you have to start somewhere. And for yeah. anyone who, yeah, who's well, trying to start a workout, that should be, yeah. Sure. What I love about this tip is that it's, you know, absolutely really good for transplant athletes. But I think about someone who maybe went through a cancer um, treatment, you know, course, or someone who's back from a knee injury or hip injury or like anything. Like so many times in life, you have to start again an exercise routine. And I think the the mental part of that is really the hardest for people. Like, oh my God, I have to get back yeah. to where I was. Like, that's very normal to think that, but really what you have to do is focus on these small, small things. And so your tip kind of speaks to that, which just start. Right. It doesn't matter how fast, yes. just start. And that fundamentally is, is so, so important. Yeah, and not tomorrow, today. And I'm saying that more for myself, probably, because I, I, I say tomorrow so much that tomorrow's I've had probably like 30 of them at this point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just whatever you can do, if it's five minutes, just doing a small, like, walk around the yard or something, just start somewhere. Start. Yeah, excellent. So tip number two, listen to your body. Now, on the surface, this sounds obvious, but why is this important to you? Uh, it's important because as a, a transplanted person, uh, it's even more important for you to be hyper vigilant to the messages that your body's sending you, whether it's a heart transplant, lungs. I mean, taking care sometimes. I mean, I was I was an athlete from when I was very young through, you know, college age. And there were I, it was very easy to push myself, you know, just push myself to the absolute limit. But when you have a transplant, you you still want to push yourself, but you want to make sure that you're also taking care if you're feeling out of breath, you know, making sure that it's not something more serious or if you're feeling sore in your muscles or you need a day of rest, you know, you, you need to just, you know, listen to the wisdom that comes from your body. Um, and if you feel you can do more also, it's not just taking a rest, but, you know, if you're a little bit hesitant to push yourself because of your health situation, but you feel like your body is like telling you to do a little bit more, like you feel like you have more strength, mm -hmm. listen listening to your body and, you know, taking it a step further and just seeing where you can go. Our bodies are amazing. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are absolutely amazing. Yikes. Like, oops, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> now you saw my back, background. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm fading right now, but okay. <laughs> well, you have sort of ange an angelic glow around you. So it works for this. Um, okay. so what, what I like about this tip so much, the way you, you said it, it's not just watching out for yourself when you're maybe not feeling good but also when you are feeling good like give yourself the opportunity to, to push yourself a little bit um and i always remember like after my my first transplant uh, i remember the idea that I, I became suddenly a hypochondriac like i was nervous about everything but then the nurse said it's okay you don't want to miss the clue that counts so it's okay to be sort of ultra uh, vigilant and the longer you are away from that transplant the better you're going to manage that but that sort of psychological aspect of your health 
uh, is extremely important. And that's number two, it says, listen to your body. And on one hand, it's like a, a conversation about your physical health, but really it's a, a psychological tip for me. Yeah. Excellent. So then the third tip you have here is find a routine that works for you and stick to it. Why is that so important to you? Um, if you want to be competitive or even not like super competitive, but if you have a goal to reach, um, I think like having some sort of routine in order, not even to have a goal, but just to stay healthy, having a routine makes it a little bit easier um, to, to work out and to, to see where your, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Um, if you work out like once, once a month or, you know, sporadically, then it's really hard to, to tell like, or to see your progress. So having a routine just helps you to like see your progress, record your progress and, and to just grow in your strength. So having a routine is super important and it's, it's not easy to build a workout routine at all, you know, especially if you're a busy person or you have a job that is, doesn't have like a, a fixed schedule or if you have children, but trying to find some sort of, you know, routine. And I know this doesn't work for every single person. Some people it's like, get in a workout when you can get it in. But uh, if you can build a routine, that would, that would be great. Totally, totally. So the number four, <laughs> I want you to unpack this a little bit more is celebrate all the small wins. You capitalized all. So why? I mean, that, again, this is one of these uh, tips like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. But why for you celebrate all the small wins? Um, let's see. Is it OK if I remove this background? Because sure. now I just look like a half of a head. And okay. I <laughs> it looks like there's like wind or something, you know, pushing hair behind you. OK, let's go with this. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of hilarious. All right. So you all know that I'm from the USA. Um, so even though I don't have the flag, you know, I'm still yes, repping. We know, we know at this point. <laughs> so um, celebrate all the small wins, man. It is this one could have been even closer to the top after after getting a transplant like every single milestone that you hit, like taking a walk or, you know, I mean, there was one when I ran full speed on the treadmill for like 10 seconds, not even that, you know, not even that long. And I could breathe afterwards. Like I didn't feel like I was going to die. It was oh, like, wow. this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I have to shout out. Mm -hmm. Like it, it helps keep you going when you're like, you all, I was able to hold my breath underwater for five seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that may not sound amazing to other people, like five seconds, really, but just celebrating what your body has just gone through and all of the things, like seeing the progress that your body has made, regardless of how small it is, it may seem small to other people, but truly it's amazing that you're like, alive to do these things as a transplant recipient so i believe in celebrating every single thing that you can <laughs> yeah so i want to talk about this a little bit more so like you celebrated running for 10 seconds on the treadmill you celebrated holding your your breath underwater like how did you feel after you celebrated did, did the celebration itself do you think give you like a mental thing afterwards because i know just those moments of life are important to celebrate but if you can just think back like did it make you feel better afterwards just by celebrating, like give you a little more umph for the next time you're getting out a, a workout? Yes, it, it was, it made me feel better. It made me very emotional um, because uh, it was like, oh my God, yeah. you know, it was an emotional feeling as well. Like yeah. when, when you get, I mean, everyone who's a transplant recipient who's, who's watching understands, before you get your transplant, you're super sick. I mean, if you're at the point where you need a transplant, you're either on dialysis, you're on heart failure, your lungs have collapsed, you know, something really major has happened. And some of this, these small things that you're able to do after the transplant, you would not have been able to do before. So it's also a moment of realization, like, wow, look how far I've come. Yeah. 
And then also it's, it's a great feeling. And it's like, I want more of these feelings. Like, what can I do next? Uh, this is me personally, you know, if I'm like, yes, I read for 10 seconds. I want to do 15 next time. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you have great people around you who can celebrate with you, it makes it even better. I mean, personal celebrations are great also, but when you have like a community of people who are rooting for you, it just makes it that much sweeter. Yeah, it's pretty awesome for sure. So tip number five you have here is stretch well, stretch often. Why is that important to you, Constance? Um, let's fix the light. It's becoming nighttime here. So <laughs> this is why I'm having so many struggles. Yeah, no worries, with, no worries. With the lighting. This one's very important because as athletes, um, an injury and just as you know, our bodies, period, an injury can really set us back a lot. And an injury um, can really be detrimental to our health. And one of the ways to, to prevent injuries or to minimize the risk of injury is to just stretch and stretch well. And when you think you've stretched enough, maybe stretch just one or two minutes more, you know, get it really take. It's so important for us to take care of our bodies and stretching is a way to protect ourselves. Um, it might be so exciting to like, yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm healthy, whatever, but minimizing the risk of, of, um, of injury is super important. Yeah. So that's why I put that there. Thank you. Thanks so much, Constance. So uh, this is awesome. It's really good to see you and hear your tips. So for audience members out there, you can uh, find out more of these podcasts on facebook.com forward slash World Transplant Athletes or Instagram World Transplant Athletes. And now I have about 60 titles and growing on YouTube. So type in YouTube World Transplant Athletes and you'll find it. I don't yet have a, a link for YouTube, but I will very soon. Um, and there's lots of titles there with subtitles. So if you have a friend who speaks French or Japanese or something else, you likely can find your subtitle and pass it on to your friend. Um, World Transplant Athletes, tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime, and of course, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. Constance, thank you so much. It was good to see you again. Thanks, Zach.